All right, so who is Miss Ross? Oh my gosh, that's such a loaded question. So it depends on the day, um, but who am I? Who am I as a person? I am, um, in one word, I would like to say um, inspiration. Um, I hope to inspire all new teachers that you can make it and you can do exactly what I do, wake up excited every morning about coming to work. There is a joy on the inside that did not come from um, the job that I accepted, did not come from the kids that walk in the classroom, did not come from the husband that I may have had or the children that I have. There is that joy that is on the inside that came from me just falling in love with who I am. Inspiration. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. So teaching is a big part of your life. Yeah. Okay. What made you enter education? So what made me enter education? And as I go back as a young, young girl, I remember in second grade, I used to ask my teacher for all her stuff that she was getting ready to throw up, um, throw away, probably throw up too, but throw away. And my mom probably just was like, what in the entire universe? Um, I would bring home all this stuff and I would act like I was a teacher. I just thought it was the best thing. Although that did not make me want to be a teacher. I would just emulate that because I just thought teachers was cool and they had the best <laughs> job ever. Um, I really wanted to be, uh, I wanted to work in a um, museum. And um, I wanted to work in DC. Um, but what happened was I got my internship and I was working in special forces and I wasn't offered the job after my internship. And a principal in the grocery store parking lot was like, you would be a great teacher. I saw you in Sunday school. And I was teaching Sunday school at my parents' church. And he asked me if I wanted to work. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> thinking about money. <laughs> and I, that, that's all. So that's how wrote. it started. Yeah, I went to school to be a historian. I was wow. a double major, history and political science. Yes, I was going to go to and, D.C. and change the world. And how long have you been a teacher? Um, so I started with a temp, or not temp, it's called like substitute teaching, um, in 2000. Um, and that was like I was working daycare and doing a little side job. And then I worked 2001 where I was getting full checks every month. So that is... So 20 years. Yeah. Wow, 20 years. Yeah. It's crazy, right? You think about it and be like, what? <laughs> Great. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what would you say the best thing about being a teacher is? Oh my gosh. Um, you know the best thing about ten, being a teacher is the thing that I probably will never get to see. It's the, the seeds that I plant every single day because I come with the attention to love on them in the way that, that they all should be loved, right? And I make sure that I love on them. I'm saying good morning to everybody. And that's the saying good look, morning does not mean that you love a kid, but in the energy that I put out to all the, everybody that I come in contact with, specifically my, my male friends, my boys that I teach. Um, and I just love on them every single day and everything that we do, whether that's giving them pencils or telling them this is your classroom and you get your own pencil, right? Like that's yours. Um, but I will probably will never see from the time that I told them, hey, make sure you're thinking through your, your thoughts. Like think through, think through everything that you, before you make that choice, you think that's the best option? Before you make that choice, did you think through that? Like, I won't see that when they're in the grocery store or when they possibly are facing death in a family or how they have to actually process how they think and how they feel from a lesson that I've taught them in the classroom. You know, I never yes. see it. But Aww. I know that I did it. I've know. never thought of teaching it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So I just love it. I love that. I know they'll use it. Because I've used it, you know, from what yeah. people share with me. Like, I love that. It's going to be okay. Now make my decision. All right. And okay. you were mentioning earlier how you are a mother, mm -hmm. right? So I always wanted to know how do you take some of your teaching strategies and incorporate them into motherhood and then vice versa? Get on my kids' nerves. Yeah. Um, I get on my students' nerves and I get on my children's nerves. <laughs> um, because, um, well, it's, it is what it is. You become a teacher mom whether you want to be or not. Um, and that is whether you have biological children or you don't in the classroom. Because you look that, especially if you're a female teacher, you look that in that role, that parental role, uh, and you take it on. You just, you, and then whatever the grade level, you're gonna take on that role, um, if you have the heart of a teacher. Um, how do I create that balance with my own children and how I have used what I've learned in the classroom and as a parent is consistency, how I plan everything. I can tell you our, our summer plans, a boom, 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 boom. It was more effective when my children were younger and I'm, as I am developing as a parent, because as my kids grow old, I, I grow older, I evolve as a parent too, and I'm learning different things. And there ain't no book out there for it. Right. Um, <laughs> can't but teach as I this. Evolve, right, no, can't teach this. But as I evolve as a parent, I also see that I'm evolving as a woman, but also evolving as a woman helps me evolve as a teacher and also helps me to embrace 
So embracing my students and some of the things that they deal with that I never had to deal with as a parent helped me embrace my children and things that I've never dealt with. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, oh, well, I remember a student telling me that they did this. Yeah. Okay, so my son out here doing this. Oh, okay, great. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so just, just, just um, the fact to be open-minded and it helps, it just involves me as a person. Every year I'm a different person and, and because of the experience I experienced with my children and my students, I learned something different. They're my greatest teachers, greatest teachers. Cause you know, they're very transparent yeah. and they're gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what thing. is the hardest struggle when dealing with parents in the school system and how can we as parents make teachers' lives easier? Okay, so. I'm can a mom, I, I wanna can know. Can I flip? Yes, I flip I'm a mom, it? I wanna know. First of all, and this may not be, um, this, this may not be um, popular opinion, I guess, um, but first, 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 first. And that's probably why I'm not an admin, because I would say this. I need everybody to understand the only reason you're here is because those kids walk through that door. So first of all, some teachers need to check themselves. Okay. And you know I love teachers, so that's gonna be that. But the second part is, as a parent, how do you make the job easier when you know, um, or hopefully you come in with the heart space that uh, the teacher is there for you. We're on the same team. And as a parent, do not bring your educational experience into the classroom. So if you had a rough educational experience, so if you had a bad experience with some teachers, you come into the classroom or you come at those teachers or at those educators with the mindset and this headspace of how you felt as a student. So if it was rough for you, if you had some bad experiences, you are treating me, you're triggered. Yeah, and you're, she's triggered, you're, you're, right, you're little, little right. Showing. Um, and you bring that out in your actions, you bring that out in your tone, and so you come in a, um, almost like a defensive way. Like hostile you come a little in, bit. They're a little hostile yeah. in that way. And what you have to understand, this is really, really important, that you have to understand, these are some new teachers, okay? They knock at your buck, and they'll lose it all. They ain't got nothing to lose. Me, I got a lot to lose. Been in the game for a long time. Uh, <laughs> but but on, on, on another note, you don't, know, you don't understand what, teachers deal with. They have teacher trauma too. They have triggers. And so you want the most safe environment, not only for your child, because that's what you're coming to advocate for, but also for your teacher. So you have to come from that headspace and not bring some of your own traumas and dramas into the classroom and just, just come to say, hey, this person, we're on the same team. And how can we create that bridge to make sure that our child, because it's our child, is having yeah. the most successful outcome. I think right? that's a good piece of advice. Yeah, to look at it as yeah, cause that's because like you said, we mm -hmm. do have similar roles mm -hmm. as a parent and as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the kid is in school just as much as they are at mm -hmm. home. Right. You I'm know, a mom, for real. so mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I love teachers too. Mm -hmm. I know I could never be a teacher, but I always <laughs> love like getting the teacher gifts yes. and telling them how grateful I am because yes. I can only imagine, I know what my child is like, but mm -hmm. you have 15 of those, mm -hmm. you know, in one, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 30? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in, in one area. <laughs> so that's a lot, yeah. you know, that's mm -hmm. a lot. So as a and, parent, you know, then, we are grateful. And then also like you said about the, um, just looking at it as our child, it has to be because of the, um, I mean, it becomes your child. Yeah, it's the relationship like, you develop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that because yes. they really are, I hope, you know, if you get that type of teacher. Talk to me about how you feel like you're impacting the community in a positive way. Oh, well, it's in all high hopes, right? And, and then the high expectations that I have. Um, it doesn't end when I stop teaching, right? Um, I have future goals and some things that I want to continue to do that um, will continue to build the community of education. And so whether that's in um, to becoming a college professor or developing some programs to help develop new teachers, um, I'll continue in that. The impact um, I would hope would be to, um, in a word, long last, well, I don't know if that's one word, but long lasting. It's an impact that um, does it end? It never ends. Right. It is something that whether it was one conversation that you had with me that will help you get through the school year, or if it was me just being nice and giving you, you know, whatever incentive or whatever scholarship that you may have applied for, or whatever gift card you may have won through a raffle from IG, that coffee, which I was supposed to do this morning, I completely forgot. I got the thing ready and everything. I'm gonna do it Monday. Um, that <laughs> coffee that I was supposed to do, you know, just give them the scan bar where they can just go and get a coffee. Whatever it is that said, you can get through this day, which leads to that week, which leads to that month, that year. Mm -hmm. um, you never want to be a, the reason that another teacher wants to give up. 
and I want to be the reason that teachers want to stay in the profession. Yeah. You know, no judgment. Okay. So my last question, mm -hmm. because we want to know, mm -hmm. all right, what is next mm -hmm. for Miss Rawls? <laughs> Jabs? No, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> God? No, I was like, tell me. No, I was like, no. Um, so right now I got a little few things in the fire. Um, probably part two to this. I would love to, um, you know, connect with some more educators around the U.S. and the world. Um, but for me personally, so in eight years, I'll be hitting the milestone. And also I'm prepping to retire in eight years from just being in the classroom teacher or whatever comes after this, right? Um, with that comes a Tesla. <laughs> and with that comes me um, traveling the world. And so I want to get a tiny house and move and have a Tesla and all this and that, but just talk about professionally and educationally because I want to get into personal life, is that um, I am prepping now to work on the collegiate level and develop um, new teachers and become a professor that specifically teaches African-American teachers. Um, and that's my goal, but of course my love is for everyone. Um, but I just have a passion and a heart for new black teachers. And I think about my experience and what I went through, um, just feeling so isolated and so alone and not seeing anybody else that looked like me, right? Having my first black teacher, I still remember that experience like, oh my God. You know? Me too. And just like, oh my gosh, I got me a black too. teacher. Yeah. And you like, look like me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I touch you? Yes. You know, like for real though, every day. Like she is amazing. Like, yeah. It also gives mm -hmm. other um, younger black women hope mm -hmm. to be able to see what they aspire to be. Mm -hmm. You were, um, you know, blessed enough to see those role models mm -hmm. growing up of women in leadership and teaching mm -hmm. positions and to be able to be that role model for mm -hmm. uh, the new generation. I'm so is, grateful. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and that you can make it. I know we talk about, we don't get paid enough, no? Everybody can be paid more, no matter the profession, right? But you can make it. And there are resources, and, there, and that's probably gonna be some things that I begin to talk about more of too, that even with the small finances that we get, you still can maintain. Yeah. Although I do know in the first five years of teaching, it is the most difficult. So Dear New Teacher documentary and retreat, I'm so excited to announce this and also to launch this. Um, you'll be able to find this documentary on my YouTube channel, Yvette Rawls TV. And also the link is always gonna be in my bio for all of the resources that we have, but I hope you go there to like, subscribe, and to share. Um, use this in any ways that you see fit. Um, to teach, to create, and also to make an awareness um, for anyone that possibly feels that they are alone in this profession. Or to use this professional development to let other teachers know that, um, to teach, you know, even admin, I'm sorry, to teach admin or people in leadership roles what their teachers are experiencing. To my dear new teachers, this documentary and the message that I would like to leave with you guys is to understand that you are not alone in this journey. Also to understand that this, this profession is so rewarding. It's one of the best professions out there and my favorite profession that's out there. Although I want to tell you that it is challenging, but just push through, you know, connect with people that build you up, strengthen you in areas that you are weak. But also I want to encourage you to learn as much as you can while you can. No one can ever take away what you know. Whether you're in the classroom, whether you elevate to a coach, whether you move forward and say you want to impart into educators and become an administrative role, learn as much as you can while you can and always have the heart of a teacher.